Hello everybody, Root Beer here. Uh, I thought I'd switch up a little bit of my straight edge and compass constructions and uh, talk about the concept of a constructible number. So a constructible number is one where we can, using a straight edge and compass, create that length. Now, how are we going to create length with straight edges and compasses if we don't start with anything? So you are allowed to start with a single length, and this length is considered to be the unit. Okay, so then we ask ourselves, well, what other lengths can we do? I'll, I'll even label this guy as one. We assume that the length one, well, let me do that. We assume that the length one is given. You can construct the length one. What other numbers can we get? Well, all we need to do is get a line segment with that length. So, well, what can we do? If we just took uh, one of the endpoints here and connected that up to itself, we'd have zero. So zero is a constructible number. But uh, more interestingly, we can do things like so we use our compass and our straight edge. And now we've, uh, we can talk about this length here that is the diameter of this circle. Now the radius was the one that we started with, so this has got to be two. So two is a constructible number. And we can keep doing this. Get ourselves, we'll use uh, orange here, we'll get three. Oh, I forgot to uh, need the point first. We can get three as a constructible number, that sort of thing. Okay, so we can do all this. Uh, we can get two, we can get three. You can see pretty quickly we're going to get all the integers. Well, all the positive integers. You can never have a negative length, right? So you're never going to get negative one as a constructible number. But one is, zero is, two, three, four, five, six. So we might ask ourselves, what other numbers are constructible? And this is actually a pretty important question. Uh, the reason being, uh, mathematicians have been uh, wondering about certain ideas for a very long time, basically since uh, the ancient Greeks. And, and they, they liked doing these straight edge and line constructions. They didn't have as fancy a notion of one is constructible, therefore two is. They, they didn't define constructible. But they certainly wanted to do things. And there's a couple things they wanted to do. So one thing the Greeks wanted to do was if I hand you an angle, we know we can bisect this angle. So I'll quickly bisect this given angle. And so if we can bisect an angle, I split it in half, what else can we do? Well, we could split it in half again, and we could get a quarter of the angle, and an eighth of the angle, and so on. But uh, one thing they didn't know whether or not they could do, could we split the angle into thirds? So that, that became a question. So here we bisected uh, the, the angle that I handed you. But can we do more? Can we trisect it is the term. And so they wondered about this for a while. And they, you know, can we use a straight edge and, and, and a compass? Can we do all this sort of stuff? And they just didn't know. Okay. And it turns out you can't. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, what, what's going on here? But let's talk about another problem that they, they wanted to do. So another thing they wanted to do, if you've ever read Euclid's Elements, uh, you know, and I'm not going to do the construction because it takes a little bit of time, but uh, you know that it's possible if I give you uh, a polygon, like a triangle or, or a pentagon or anything, you can create a square whose area is equal to that given polygon. Uh, Euclid's elements, when it's translated, typically calls this a rectilinear figure. But uh, you can take a square, uh, you can take a triangle or, or an eight-sided figure or something like that, as long as it's bound by straight lines, you can, with a very lengthy procedure, get a square whose area is the same size. And, you know, triangles, irregular pentagon, uh, even irregular pentagons, these are all very nice, very common shapes. And there's another very nice, very common shape that the Greeks knew about, and that was the circle. And so it was wondered, 
you know, we can get all these polygons to have the same area as a, a square. Can we make a square whose area is the same as a circle? They wondered then, you know, can we, with straight edge and compass, because they wanted to see what can we do when we limit ourselves? What can we do when, while well, being exact? And the answer is, well, you, you can't do that one either. Okay? And uh, the last one that uh, they, they sort of wondered about, I'll see if I can uh, do the construction while I'm talking, but the last one they wondered about is you can construct a square who is, uh, whose area is double the length or double the area of a given square. So I will quickly construct a square here while I talk. And so that was great, but squares don't come up very often in in real life. It's you can't hold a square. You can't uh, make a, a square. Uh, you can't like make a square and hold it in real life. You can't, uh, I suppose, tiles uh, on say like a floor or something, but it, it's not particularly common to need to use a square. Usually in a 3D world, like the one we live in, you work with 3D objects. And so what's sort of the 3D version of a square? Well, it's a cube. And so they, they wondered, well, if I, can, uh, if I can double a square, is the term for it, you know, make a a uh, square whose, so now I've got my square, I can double it. I'm just going to hide a bunch of the, the rough work. So they said, if, if I give you a cube, is there a way you can make another cube whose volume is double that of this given cube? And so they wondered that for a while. So here, let's get... Uh, Oh, what did I do? I hit backspace too many times. So I'll get my square here, and I will very quickly double it, because it's a very quick straight edge uh, construction. And they weren't expecting that doubling a cube would be so simple as doubling a square, but they wondered, can we at least do it? And again, the answer is no. But these are, these are the three great problems of antiquity, as they are occasionally referred. So here's our here's our square. Uh, what, what 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 do we need to do? Well, we just connect up the diagonal. If the side length is one unit, then the the diagonal is root two times that unit. And so then, if we construct a square with a side length of this root two times the unit distance, we will get a square whose area is double the initial square. So not, not wholly unreasonable to ask, can we just double a cube? Because if you, uh, for example, read Euclid's Elements, you will know that he does talk a great deal about the three-dimensional solids and, and cubes a little bit there, too. And so the cube's constructions were not outside the realm of possibility. But doubling a cube, could that be done? And no. And the reason these th uh, three can't be done is trisecting a, a given angle basically amounts to I've handed you some angle. Can I construct a third of that angle? If if, if so, angles are not lengths, and we, we deal with constructability of a length. We say two is constructible because I can get something that has length two, just from starting with this length one. Uh, so suppose I hand you. Uh, a length associated to a given angle. So suppose I hand you cosine of theta, and you need to know a little bit of trig at this point, but I'm not going to dwell on it. Basically, with trigonometry, we have we can associate some length to some angles in a very nice specified way. And so if I handed you a length cosine theta, some length based on theta, could I get cosine of uh, theta over three, cosine of a third of the angle? That's what it amounts to. Is can I construct that? And the answer is no. Okay. Uh, for the the problem of what's called squaring the circle, can I get a square whose area is the same as a given circle? This amounts to can I construct a square root of pi? Okay. Is square root of pi is that length constructible? And the answer is no, it's not. And for doubling the the cube, here we have doubled the square. This amounted to can I construct root two? as my, my length, or root 2 times a given length. 
and that is certainly possible. We can multiply lengths and, and other things. Uh, and so since you can get root 2 as a length that's constructible, you can get this, this square here. So doubling the cube amounts to, can I construct the cube root of 2? Is that length constructible? And the answer is, no, it's not. And it took a very long time. It took to a mathematician named uh, uh, Everett Galois, very nice French mathematician. Dadly, sadly died a little, uh, little too young in a duel, if I recall. But it took, uh, it was 18th century, 19th century, something to that effect. Um, French Revolution times uh, is, is what I'm thinking. Uh, but it took until him to answer these problems. So basically 2,000 years to, to answer these problems, and they all have to do with constructible numbers. So that's sort of your intro to what a constructible number is and why we care, because we wanted to solve these problems. And the way we go about showing that you can't do those three problems is introducing constructible numbers and showing what numbers can be constructed from other ones. And that's something I'm going to talk about in the next couple videos. So that's your introduction, and thanks for watching. I will see you guys in a future video.